Hello, everybody. There is little energy in the comfort zone. And there's quite a huge a lot of energy if you dare to jump. And I want to talk to you today about how to push your company out of the comfort zone, how to start reinventing yourselves, and why it's worth the effort. The comfort zone is a quiet, a warm, peaceful, cozy place. We all love to be in it. It's great, and it's good. And it's actually too good to leave it. But after a while, you stop noticing that your market is fading, that your products are not being used, that new competitors come around. And it's like the frog. He's sitting there in the cold water. Everything's fine. Markets are there. Products are there. The water heats up, and he misses the point to jump just before the water starts boiling. And that's exactly what happens to companies. And, and let, let me give you some examples from real life. There was a time where everybody in the US rented their videos via Blockbuster. They had retail stores everywhere. Then Netflix entered the market, an online streaming company, and reinvented it. And what did Blockbuster do? They became lazy and arrogant. Their CEO said in 2008, I don't get this fascination everybody has with Netflix. They do absolutely nothing what we can't do ourselves. Today, Blockbuster's bust, and Netflix and other companies have taken over the market. Nintendo, they've been printing money for decades with their products like Mario, Pokemon. And for the last years, they've been casually ignoring the fact that 77% of world population own a mobile phone. And their water is starting to heat up. Three weeks ago, they reported their first time ever annual loss of almost 1 billion euros. And their president is still saying going or developing for iOS is absolutely not under consideration. Why didn't Sotheby's and Christie's do eBay? Why didn't Borders, the biggest US bookstore, do Amazon? Why didn't MySpace react when the water was still warm but started reacting when it was actually boiling? Why do so many companies miss this point of jumping before it is too late? Because they are resting on their laurels. Success in the present or the past doesn't translate into success in the future. And that's what we, with our company, just experienced in a quite, uh, yeah, um, for us, very harsh way. And that's what I want to share with you today. The five things we did to push our company out of the comfort zone and why we want to make sure that we never get back into that, because it's really painful to get out. Um, but it's good if you still can. So here is what we did. We stopped doing. For the first time ever, we didn't concentrate on the things we wanted to do. We started concentrating on the things we wanted to stop doing. So meetings nobody attends, routines nobody needs, reports nobody reads, tools that don't add value, we just got rid of all these energy suckers in the company and freed ourselves to take new stuff on board. You have to take stuff off people's desks to put new stuff on them. You have to cut off from the bottom to be able to place new things at the top. So by doing this, we lost quite a lot of weight and were able to run much, much faster afterwards. The second thing we did we played the what if game. Like, what if we had no market tomorrow? What if customers stopped using our products? What if we had no cash any longer? What would we do? Quite a lot, actually. And by playing this game and thinking the unthinkable, we realized that our water was actually quite hot already. We thought we, Berlin startup, internet, 2011, too good to fail. We invented the market four years ago when we introduced browser games for kids to Europe. But also we saw mobile gaming kicking in two, three years ago, and we had made absolutely no attempt to enter that market so far. So by playing this game, we realized that our market was still there. Water was hot, not boiling but we better get out of there. And what struck us most is why do you only play this game and why do companies only play this game when the water is boiling and when it is actually 
that the market is fading and the products are going down and the cash is going out. Why don't you play this game in good times? It's so much more fun. So the next thing we did is we played the free cash flow game. What if somebody placed 5 million euros on our table tomorrow? What would we do? So we took our employees and used one of our innovation days, which we have once a month where people can go crazy and do prototypes and everything they want to do, and said, guys, what would you do? Which product would you come up with for our company if we had 5 million euros and you could have one of them? What's the next product we're going to do? And we, us being a browser game only company until now, came up with 12 concepts for mobile gaming. And we realized by doing this exercise, we were spending our entire time and a whole company working on products we would invest no further euro into. So we started to make use of this enthusiasm because as you all know, people are best at what they love doing. So we actually started to let them do what they love doing. The next thing we did, open communication. Highly uncomfortable, I can tell you. Um, because you have to communicate everything or openly. Um, but the huge advantage is you stop wasting your company's energy on what might happen next, rumors, uncertainty, fear. And fear, I can tell you, is the biggest energy sucker of a company. Fear freezes you. Uh, if you're fearful, that's the opposite of an invention or an innovation mode. So we just put everybody on the same page. We just told everybody what we were going to do, what the strategy is, what our doubts are, and suddenly we could all stop spending energy in keeping secrets and not telling everybody everything. We could use this energy for something else. And the same goes for the outside. We shared all our thoughts about this new strategy, this reinvention, this jumping with competitors, mentors, people, and especially people that didn't think we were great and that didn't love the things we were doing, who challenged us to be quite sure that we didn't go halfway, but that we went all the way because we were leaving the comfort zone anyway, so we might as well do it right. The last thing we did, we admitted to failure. And that hurts, and especially in Germany, and for Germans, that hurts a lot, because we are Germans, we don't fail, we have to-do lists, we're organized, we're structured, uh, we don't talk about failure. Um, actually, it's quite good to do so. Um, it's part of the game anyway, and by doing so, you have two great achievements. The first is you stop doing the same mistakes over and over again, and the second thing is you create a culture where you actually accept failure and mistakes. And that's the basis for people to reach out, starting to be innovative, starting to take risks, because they know they will not be punished for it. So we pushed our company out of this comfort zone in every possible way. We flipped it. We turned it upside down. And that was uncomfortable. But I'm so sure it was worth the effort. Because I, I truly believe it will be those companies in the future that will be successful, that don't wait until the water boils, that don't wait until the platform is burning, but that stay entrepreneurial, stay hungry, take risks, and jump to reach the next level. Thank you very much. Mm.